My pleasure to come your way this evening on Business Life. My name is Emmanuel Apuaji Yafi. Good evening and welcome. Coming up in this edition, as part of efforts to help step up investments in the agri sector, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center is advocating agricultural-based research to turn around the fortunes of the sector. Some bank treasurers and expect the planned dollar auction by the Bank of Ghana to significantly stabilize the Ghana CD. And Swiss International Hotels and Resorts has signed an agreement to acquire a majority stake in Alisa Hotels Accra. These and others coming up on the program tonight. Stay glued to your seat as we bring you the details shortly after this. Live today is brought to you by GCB Bank. Hello again and welcome back. And you can stay interactive with us by tweeting at Joy Business GH and Facebook. We are on Joy Business. Now to the details. The agri sector recorded no foreign investments in the third quarter of the year, while its performance has been on the decline. As part of efforts to step up investments in the sector, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center is advocating agricultural-based research aimed at turning around the fortunes of the sector. The need for an agricultural investment plan that will yield meaningful returns to the economy has become crucial. Statistics indicate growth in the agricultural sector has declined over the years, recording a growth of just 0.04% in 2015 from 4.6% in 2014. The poor performance could also be attributed to relatively low foreign investments. To this end, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center is encouraging more research into the sector aimed at exposing investors to several opportunities. Speaking to Joy Business at a seminar in Accra, the Chief Operating Officer of the GIPC, Carl Nelson, explained how agricultural-based research could change the story of the sector. The GIPC has realized that there's a need for research findings to be made available to people in practice or in business where the research findings are needed. Now, we also realize that researchers themselves need to be informed about the issues that crop up in business, issues on which they can research for problem solving or for improvement in Right. So we realize that because of that, we have part of our function has been to facilitate and promote business for the development of the economy of Ghana. This is one way we can put that function to practice. And therefore, we are bringing them together to improve yield or to improve practice on the production side and also to improve the quality of research because communication with people in practice will tell the researchers where to direct their research for improvements. Meanwhile, senior research scientists at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, Dr. Grace Balfrey Aku, is calling for more support to enable agricultural research scientists come out with appropriate information that will be beneficial to investors. We believe that entrepreneurs, government, and other stakeholders should invest in agriculture. You know, in our research findings, they should invest and use it, outscale, you know, and promote them. That is only when the economy would grow. That is when we look at it at the uh, value chain. When it comes to production, what goes into production? We have transporters there, we have the packages there. And then there will be all these buy industries that will come out. The seminar was under the theme Research Findings and Investment Opportunities in the Cultural Sector. And in another development, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center has, in its third quarter investment into the country report, 
budget $241 million. The following report finds out whether this level of interest generated in the country despite the upcoming elections has impacted on investment attraction. According to the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC, the total value of investments from July to September reached $241 million. This is what it got for some 46 projects registered with the center. However, compared to the same period last year, this actually marks about 70% reduction in the $820 million secured in the third quarter of 2015. Investments brought in by foreigners for the third quarter of 2016 reached $235 million. But when you compare this amount to the same period in 2015, it actually represents a 59% reduction in foreign direct investments. The projected jobs also go down by some 75% compared to the same period last year. But the center has maintained that if you compare the investment numbers so far, to the same period in 2015, it supports claims that the election has not impacted negatively on capital attraction. Away from that, some bank treasurers and currency dealers say they don't expect the planned dollar auction by the central bank to significantly stabilize the Ghana city. The Bank of Ghana will, from this Wednesday, start selling part of the cocoa loan syndication to commercial banks. But why are some of the banks not that optimistic about this. George Biafi has more. According to some commercial banks, their concerns are based on the fact that the amount of dollars the Bank of Ghana is putting out is not enough to meet their demand. For instance, one of the top tier banks which is participating in the auction is looking for $20 million to meet the needs of their customers for this week. However, according to the auction rules, entitled to four million dollars which they say is woefully inadequate some of them have also told joy business that if the current challenge is really a demand from corporate institutions then just meeting a fraction may not be enough to completely address the problem but just slow the pace of depreciation on the forex market rather than completely halting it some of the banks have told your business that on the average they would need about a hundred million dollars a week the regulator on the other hand have argued they are being strategic with the release of the 1.8 billion dollar coco loan syndication to banks so that they don't end up depleting all their reserves the central bank is planning to sell 20 million dollars this wednesday another 20 million dollars on december 14 and the final tranche will be done on december 28 the Bank of Ghana is planning to carry out this cocoa loan syndication auction every quarter to meet the needs of all the banks over a period. On business life. Now, revenue from gold exports in the, into the economy is expected to reach over $4.5 billion by the end of this year. This comes as the contribution from the commodity, which was pegged at $3.3 billion, have exceeded by about 73% in spite of the challenges with gold prices on the international market. This was disclosed at this year's Ghana Mining Industry Awards. Kuku Aban was there in our reports. The award ceremony, which was second in the series, saw Newmont Ghana Gold, a half a mine, see off eight other mining firms to clinch the prestigious Company of the Year Award. The company's outstanding corporate social investments, environmental management, innovation, among others, did the trick. Regional Senior Vice President for Newmont Ghana, Alvin Pristorio, said the company will simply continue to create value for its stakeholders. For us as, as Newmont, it's not about winning prizes. It's about creating value and improving lives through sustainable and responsible mining. For us, it's important to improve what we do on a daily basis. And that's how I see our business going forward. We want to create value for all our stakeholders, stakeholders, uh, governments, communities surrounding our, our, our mines, and that's how we see our business. The best performer in mine supplies and support services went to PW International, while Asanko Gold grabbed the Corporate Social Investment Project of the Year Award. Best performer in local content was picked by Adam Resources, whereas the best performer in exploration went to Cape Coast Resources. Best performer in innovation was picked by Newmont Ghana Gold 
with Toronto Gold Mine grabbing the Occupational Health and Safety Best Performer Award. The Best Performer in Environment and Management was jointly won by Newman Ghana Gold, Achim Mine, and Chirano Gold Mine. President of the Chamber of Mines, Kwame Adokofo, commended players in the industry for their resilience in the face of what he said are challenging times for the sector. He, however, underscored the need for stakeholders to support the Minerals Commission in addressing the menace of Galamse operations in the country. In the face of these very difficult times, companies have been resolute in making the operation, keeping the operations afloat and relevant in Ghana's economy. A recurring challenge to the industry, the outside, the activity is not The Chamber is in full support of the Minerals Commission press to mainstream and formalize the activity of the people to ensure that Ghana optimizes benefits from the subsector while managing the adverse of Ghana, John Senesiama was full of praise of the mining sector, saying it still contributes the largest to the economy. $4.5 billion, he noted, is expected from gold exports by the end of the year. A development, he says, is helping the country balance its payments. The mining sector continues to repatriate significant amounts of its export earnings. From 2010 to date, it has repatriated about 64% of its total export earnings, made up of about 17% mandatory repatriation and 47% voluntary repatriation. I am indeed looking forward anxiously to the day we will do away with stability agreements and at the same time obtain 100% repatriation, even though the current level of repatriation is commendable. This year, gold production has picked up significantly, apparently due to the delay by the U.S. Fed in hiking its interest rate, a practice which tends to divert investments from gold. The increase in prices engendered by the delay and the increase in production by some mining companies are having positive impacts on the country's balance of payments. His Excellency, Ambassador Joe presented a Lifetime Achievement Award for his immense contribution to the sector. The second Ghana Mining Industry Awards was under the theme, Recognizing Excellence, Celebrating Achievement in the Mining Industry. That report was by Kuku Aban. Now, the Deputy Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Jifa Kumashi, is urging the youth to be more innovative in helping to bridge the unemployment gap a recent report by the World Bank on Jobs in Ghana revealed that about 48% of the youth in the country between the ages of 15 and 24 years do not have jobs. But in an interview with Joy Business, Deputy Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Jifa Gumashi, said the youth must step up their efforts to help create their own jobs. When you've gone to university, you've gone to attain higher education, and you should not acquire that and sit down and only before you can work. That once you have higher education, you should be able to think outside the box and to be able to uh, position yourself to do something and you now be the employer. So the state is playing its part, but beyond what the state can do is what individuals can also do. The stories about individuals who have um, excelled in their countries um, and they uh, they've worked for themselves. You have your, in Africa, you have your Dangotes. In Ghana, you have your um, uh, Osekwa Despite he's, he's, he's an individual. See how many businesses he's grown. So, really, I think that it's a state of mind. It's is is what you 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 recognize as your strength or your weakness, and using it for to your advantage and to the advantage of your community. Energy expert Kwame Jantua has reiterated the development of renewable energy as an integral part of Ghana's entire power mix. He's calling on building adequate capacity in the energy sector to enable investors have access to reliable power to do business. The Energy Commission requires businesses to adopt 20% of renewable energy sources by 2020 to enhance their power supply. Kwame Jantua was speaking in an interview at the sidelines of the 20th anniversary uh, of Kumasi Institute of Technology and Environment, KITE, in Accra. It was under the theme, 
two decades of leadership in facilitating access to sustainable energy environment. The experience of Dumso, it has brought to light opportunities in the energy power sector. And one of the opportunities is renewable energy. I think renewable energy should be an integral part of our power mix. In so doing, we need to be able to build capacity in that area so that Ghanaian entrepreneurs who are interested in the power sector can take it up. What areas are we talking about? We talk about solar, we talk about wind, we talk about wave, we talk about all the other alternative types of energy that we can use in this country. You're watching Business Life. We're taking a quick breather here. We'll be back. Business Life today was brought to you by GCB Bank. All right, so welcome back to Business Live. And Beta, our research analyst, has just joined me in the studio to explore uh, the stock markets as well as some issues about uh, the shares and commodities. And, and she will start by recapping how the stocks performed last weekend. And Beta, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Mark. So how did the stocks go last week before we ended? The Okay, um, let me say last week was not a very good week for us on the stock market. Uh, we had eight equities losing as compared to only two equities gaining on their previous week um, share prices. And if you look at the major indices, that's the composite index and the financial stock index, um, probably, and I'm so certain about this, that uh, this is going to be one of the worst returns that we're going to return, uh, record for the composite index and the financial stock index for the past five years. Yes, because um, we have the major indices going down by more than 50 points last week on their previous levels. And you look at the year-to-day return, the composite index closed on negative 18.54%, uh, and then the financial stock index closed on negative 24.39%. And what would be the reason for this? Uh, this because most prices or most equities are losing, or let me say are shedding off uh, some year open prices. Now, if you go to the stock market and you're looking at the year to day returns, that's how much each equity has returned to investors, almost all, except, uh, except two equities that um, Standard Chartered Bank preference share, which is returning 5.63% to investors, and then FML, which is returning about 50% plus to investors. They are the only two equities equities that are currently retur returning the most to investors. All other equities are either returning 0.00% or negatively to investors. And the one that has lost the most so far from the beginning of the year till now is mm. UT Bank. UT Bank started the year at 10 pesos per share and it has shared of um, 7 pesos and currently trading at 3 pesos per share. Wow. And lately we've been seeing uh, block trades going on in UT Bank, we don't, but we don't see that um, appreciation in terms of its price or positively moving its equity on the market. Mm -hmm. And the reason, the main reason is that investors don't know what is happening with UT Bank. Because from 2015 full year to date, we haven't had a clue of the financial position of the company because it has not been released. Is it because the, the company is not actually it's doing obvious. well? It's obvious. Yes. If you look at their first quarter financials and even first half of 2015 and third quarter of 2015, they were recording losses. That's losses after tax. Mm. But if you look at the first quarter and third quarter, they had reduced the margin of losses that they were recording. But from 2015, we haven't had a clue of how the company is performing. And that is what is actually... Um, reducing investors' confidence in the equity because mm -hmm. you don't know the financial position. And you know it is that that will also, also tell them the future growth of the company, mm -hmm. looking at their earnings per share, what profit is the company going to make in future. So, so when a company goes through this kind of cycle, mm -hmm. is it an indication that it is time to go out of business or perhaps no. uh, merge with another company? It's, it falls within an industry and it needs to be protected. So it's not um, a time for them to fall out. The only thing they have to do is to re-strategize staff mm -hmm. and if it is the administrative level, if it is the human resource, if it is the staff or even the last, the floor members, mm -hmm. then they need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure the, the expenditure
sector is a lot. And even the loans that they gave out, you know, UT Bank had this um, perception, people had this perception that if you want a loan as an SME, you want to take up any business, the best bank you can go in for is UT Bank because they'll give you the loan uh, for you to start up your businesses. But getting back these loans has been a major problem for the bank and it has actually affected their bottom lines. All right, so any other information on, on Yes, this we also had FML. Okay. Farm work um, is one equity that I'm so interested in, because and I don't regret. It's so not the product, <laughs> but it's for the fact that at the times where we had so much energy crisis, the company took up certain strategies to um, come up with, uh, do some of their production and businesses outside Ghana okay. to cut down costs. And you know, it's helped them make profits despite the fact that the country was not doing very well. Okay. And you know, it is one equity that is turning out uh, among the lots of manufacturing equities that we have on the stock market. And it is one equity that is returning much to investors. Now, if you look at FMO, um, it lost two pesos last week. But um, this two peso gain, that it's, this two peso loss that was lost was something little. Because okay. within the previous week, FMO had jumped from 9.83 Ghana cities to about 11.30. Ghana cities and it lost two pesos and it closed at eleven point two eight percent and still a very good um, equity when you are talking about returns on the stock market. So FMO is also one good equity on the market. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, uh, Beta, for that update. And you can count on Beta to bring you up to date information on the stock market, uh, stock market analysis, uh, the commodities, the equities, as well as the currencies and the. Uh, various developments on the market. It's now time for the interview of the day and currency dealers and treasurers of commercial banks are challenging claims that has been influenced by activities of speculators. Some government officials and even the Bank of Ghana have argued that the current depreciation has been fueled by activities of persons who put out information that will lead to the CD's depreciation so they can cash in on that. But president of an association made up of bank treasurers and currency Amagati disagrees. I would say it's backed by real demand. It is backed by real demand. There might be a bit of speculation, but most of it is backed by real demand. We have traders who are actually importing at this time, and we have a lot of trade transactions flowing through the system. So it's backed by actual demand. So what do you think is the way forward? There are some who are calling for intervention now. There are some who are also saying that, listen, let's wait and see. For you, what do you make of these whole argument going on currently in the market space? I'd probably say, first of all, market dynamics will obviously take place. Um, we've seen the dollar cross the four mark. On the interbank, we've seen dollar at 4.06 being traded on the markets. That's high. Um, we think that we haven't seen the effect of the cocoa syndicated um, deal and then the euro bond. We haven't seen that effect on the market. And with the central bank going to introduce the FX of November, we think that we might see some inflows coming into the system that will help to stabilize the city. So um, it's not so much a wait and see, but um, as they say, what I will find its level, market dynamics will definitely determine the price of the currency. It's a wrap on the show tonight. Many thanks for your time and your company. You can always stay interactive by tweeting at us, Joy Business is our page. And on Facebook, we are on Joy Business. For more business information, log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. My name is Emmanuel Abuaji Riafi. Join me again, same time tomorrow, for more interesting developments in the world of business. Good evening and stay healthy.